Hello, everyone. Um, why I'm waiting for my amazing guest, you will see him shortly. I want to mention two things. First, our, well, my favorite, I think many of yours as well, um, favorite human lately on this planet, Charlie Ward, has uh, launched his first book, his autobiography, which is called I'm Just Charlie. It's an ebook and it's an audiobook, and actually, he is the one who is reading the audiobook. So, support Charlie, check it out. I'm sure his story, uh, life story, it's very fascinating, it's interesting. I haven't actually had a chance yet to listen to it, but I will this week or next week. I'm going to attach the link to the website, and you can find out their ebook and audiobook by Charlie. Yeah, it's very exciting. So next time I talk to him, we're gonna talk about his book. Also, if you're interested in my story, 44 Becoming Self by Anya Kay on Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble's Cobo. Actually, I prefer Amazon. Uh, it's just easier for me, for me to maneuver with that. You can also check it out there. This is how you support me, guys. I appreciate very, very much. Um, if you have someone who likes to read, who likes captivating story that is not boring and takes you places and is about spiritual journey and discovering your true life purpose. Get my book and you can also get it in ebook and you can get it in the paperback. Thank you for listening and let me just pause this for a moment waiting for my guest. Hope you enjoy the show. I hope you really get a lot of information from the show. Oh, it's Hey, it's happening. Everyone, I am literally a little nervous today because I have such a cool, such a special guest, like, ugh, like chills. So this is Monkey Works. And I just want to ask you, is this works from like a slang from works? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay. Yep. I did, that's good. Because I was like, what is it? So I did my research and, and then it was showing like it's a slang. Yeah. First of all, I want to tell you, I came across you very recently. I am literally blown away by your work, what you're doing. I am absolutely impressed with how you deliver this to your viewers. Um, the amount of work you put behind this, how professional it is, and what a huge patriot you are. I'm really impressed and I'm grateful and I thank you for this work, literally. I'm so grateful. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I, um, I, it's, you know, like I always, I've, I've been telling people, Hey, if you do something you love, you never work a day in your life. And so these are something that I really enjoy. I'm passionate about. And, uh, for me, I've been in aerospace and defense for over 30 years. And so a lot of the things that, that I see are just secondhand nature. So I kind of understand what I'm looking at more so than most people, I think. And so, um, it's just having that, that ability to, you know, just decipher what you're looking at, understand, you know, uh, the rhythms and flows that, that uh, are commonplace in air traffic and, and knowing who the players are. So, But, you know, I want to ask you this. Um, the way this is my intention for our conversation today. There is sure. a lot of people who, like myself, never been in the army, never came across a certain vocabulary, don't really have much clue besides some research they do, hopefully, right? Not yeah. watching, you know, the TV is garbage. I'm talking like really individual research you have to do. But my intention is to highlight from your knowledge um, the current situation, what's happening. And I have few places, actually, I really would like to talk to you about um, that are on the planet of our on, on planet earth <laughs> so, so of that, i probably can't help you <laughs> yeah i'm sure you can because actually i was watching your today's video the recent one mm -hmm. and you were mentioning a few things but monkey let me start with this we have to talk about a few things like around so we cannot say the place in cuba you know i would say like gmo or i would say things like around so we can understand people should be at this point aware of those places so they have to figure out Yes. Okay. I got you. So, so here is the thing you've mentioned in one of your videos, maybe few, but the, the one recently that when we look at the GMO, let's call it, mm -hmm. 
the current map that you see, the satellite map, is not really updated. It's not accurate. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. And that's actually commonplace for uh, most facilities. So if you see an aerial shot of, say, um, uh, the desert in Nevada, right? Um, there's places out there that are uh, really well known for a lot of uh, what, what they call black works or skunk works, things that are um, classified in nature. And so you'll never get a true satellite image that's up to date and current because everybody can see that, right? This general knowledge. If you go onto Google and you start to look at those locations, mm -hmm. you can start to make sense of what you're seeing if, if you just, if it was a real live updated picture. So what they do is Google, along with our, our national defense um, organizations, go in and basically place older images or doctored images over top okay. of those spots. Okay. And so the spa is a perfect one of the, that's a perfect example of one of those where the picture that you're seeing is probably from 2009 to mm -hmm. 2016 range. Right. That's pretty old. So now from when you do your work monkey, you don't rely on the satellite image. You rely on the traffic of the planes. Correct. Right. Yes. So, so can I ask you this, like, I totally don't know a lot, but I'm absolutely fascinated by your work. So here is the thing. When you look at those planes, can you see every plane that is moving or some planes are like hidden? You cannot locate them. Right. Yeah. Some, some planes are not, are not showing. So to give you an example, the military trackers that I use are all open source. So anybody in the United States can pull those up and look at them at any time. Now, the difference is with the military, they don't have to necessarily uh, show their location, right? So they have different transponders and different squawk codes, as mm -hmm. they call them, which are basically different numbers on the dial that, that they go to that'll still show their location to people that need to know their location. But for you and I, the general public, we may not see that. So that flight app that I show, I've been told by uh, former air traffic controllers that we probably only see about 10% of wow. what's up. So, so there's a lot of traffic we don't see, right? And let me ask you this. Now, after the E-Day, have you seen more intensified traffic to the Cuban island or no? Um, so there was a, a spike about five days, six days after that day, okay? Okay. And it was a increase, uh, the volume of aircraft increased at the spa, but uh, I didn't see any, I was expecting to see more. What I saw increased was the traffic around the spa. There are certain aircraft that I've been watching that are known aircraft that are used by our intelligence community uh, because of articles that have been written up over time, you know, over the last decade. Uh, that, that talks about the companies that, that they use. It talks about the aircraft. Some of them even give you tail numbers. It gives you sites and locations that are known by our, our alphabet soup companies of where they may do their work, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so what I've been watching, I've been tracking those particular aircraft, and I've noticed that there has been an uptick, and I mean like significant uptick. Mm -hmm. um, there were five aircraft that I was following, and out of those five aircraft in a 10-day span, they, were, they, had, they had completed almost 100 flights to those, to those. Within, I'm sorry, within 10 days? Yes, within 10 wow. days. Yeah, and so I was expecting to see something from that uh, go into the spa, because every time that's happened and every time that's occurred, I've been looking for, uh, there, there's always a plane that pops into the spa. So you'll see all that, that extra traffic around the spa. And then all of a sudden you'll see uh, that'll settle down and then you'll see one airplane go to the spa, right? Yeah. And it's one of those airplanes that I've been tracking. But this time it, 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 dis it didn't really happen. I saw a couple, like maybe three out of a hundred flights. But what I did find out as I followed those flights is that there are multiple locations, and I think there's probably five prison locations all around the planet that we're utilizing, 
And that's where people are going because and these flights- Take me to the next question beautifully, like perfect. So I did the research a little bit. Actually, when you are talking about it, I already had two places before, before I even came across you. I was really intrigued, almost like um, very curious. What's yes. happening in Antarctica and in Greenland before I even came across you, okay? So- Yeah. So, so the thing with Antarctica, which maybe later we will talk about, there is an island. Part of Antarctica is actually an island owned by Rothschilds. And okay. that, that part, it's like 39 kilometers long, it's mainly ice. But you know, I follow certain people that I really trust um, on the internet. And one of those, those girls, women, she's very in it, mm -hmm. what's happening. She said that there was a plane that was actually um, Jeffrey, Jeffrey's E, Jeffrey's E plane was spotted flying there, I think last year in July, leaving Minnesota airport and going there. So I'm like, okay, so I went and check and I see this is the Rothschilds Island. So some, some activity there. Now Greenland, what's interesting with Greenland is actually a Danish island, but American Air Force mm -hmm. is in charge of it. So now when you talk about Greenland monkey and lately you see there is some activity and like the Portuguese islands, right? Yes. Can you, can you tell us what you see from those motions there? Yeah, so the, okay, so let's talk about the Portuguese stuff, the, the, the stuff coming out of Spain and uh, there's, a comp uh, there's a, uh, an island and I want to, I'm probably going to mess this up, but I want to say it's um, Ter Terciera or Terciera mm -hmm. Island. And it's a Air, Air Force base is on there. And I've been watching flights come out of Greece and other areas over in, in Europe go to that location. And then from that location up to Iceland. And now, when I looked closer, I thought, well, maybe there's a, a prison on, on, that, uh, on that island. Yeah. And and I was expecting it on the Air Force Base. So I, I kind of put out my feelers asking people, because there's people that have been based there, you know, hey, is there a prison on that island? Yeah. Or it's on the Air Force Base. And they said, no, nah, that's, that's not, that, not that they're aware of, not anything major, right? So, so then I, I kind of backed out and I started looking closer at the island in general. Mm -hmm. And right almost, the island's only 25 miles across. So I don't know how many kilometers that is, but it's not that big. But at about the 12 about almost in the middle of the island at the bottom is this beautiful big high security prison and it's only probably 20 minutes from the airport so that's when i was thinking oh wait a second here i think we stumbled on something because the flights that are going there are the same ones that are going to, to uh the spa right down in the caribbean it's the exact same airplanes so now i'm thinking i'm putting two and two together and then I had, I had reached out to some folks talking about Iceland, and that's when Greenland started coming into the picture, right? Yes. But Iceland, uh, I had somebody reach out to me that was, a, was based up there, and they were special forces, and they told me that the, that the prison on Iceland makes the one at the spa down in the Caribbean look like child's place. It looks like a playground. This one is uh, just is a beautiful, big, giant, high-security prison in Iceland. And I thought, that's, that's crazy. So, um, so as I was discovering that, somebody mentioned to me about uh, Thule Air Base, Air Force Base in Greenland, and how there was a project, I think it's called Ice Worm or something. Yeah, you just mentioned it today in the video. So I will attach below too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm looking at that. And I, I had not been watching, I, I had seen on occasion, flights going to Greenland, but I didn't really put two and two together. You know, I didn't think that was it because there was, I was already eyeballing other locations that I was pretty confident yeah. were, you know, being used in addition to the spa, right? And so Greenland, I just decided, you know, hey, I'm going to pull up the flights and just to see what's landing at this air base, just like, just like uh, the spa, I can key in the airport thing and it'll tell me arrivals and departures. And so I pull it up and sure enough, it's the same companies that we see going down to the spa, the same. So it's just, and, and they all use, so the DOD is very specific about companies that they use. And there's probably 20 airlines that they will use. Can you explain to me what is DOD? 
Yeah, Department of Defense. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry. Uh, so one thing, if I say anything that, that you don't get, just no, back. I know my viewers are smarter in this because I'm Polish. So some words, I, you know, some terminology, I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's all good. It's, so aerospace and defense is very big on acronyms. And it, it doesn't matter whether military or whether it's working for an aerospace company. Acronyms are just there. It's yeah, no time to pronounce. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have to. Yes, you have to break into the, the three, you know, just make it shorter any way you can. And so anyway, so I started looking at at Greenland and I started noticing these are the same aircraft companies. And I started noticing at first I was like, oh, it just looks like supply runs, like maybe cargo aircraft going mm -hmm. up there. Then I started looking at the times and these things are leaving D.C. at one, two o'clock in the morning. Wow. Um, and so they're, they're heading in the dark of night up to Greenland. And I'm thinking that just seems very odd. It's just not. It is like a freaking movie for real. It is. It's like a show. It's crazy. It is crazy. Like the, I don't like popcorn, but I literally like this is a show. Yeah. Yeah. It's unbelievable. So, you know, like I was thinking because I came across this some time ago when I remember everyone like not in certain parts, like talking Greenland, Greenland. I'm like, what's up with this Greenland thing? So so now it might be the case, like you're saying, there are prisons that they are not officially known by people, like kind of like a secret prisons, right? Yes, exactly. Well, and so if you've looked at that, I, I want to say it's an ice worm project. I may be getting this wrong because I've got a lot of moving parts here, right? I'm herding cats, so to speak. And so, um, but this, this base was a, they, they did basically, I don't know how many levels down below the surface, but it's an, an underground base that was set up for the, for the Cold War. And it was holding nuclear weapons there. But it also, the picture that I saw, the cutaway picture that I saw of, of the base underground, it was a, it actually has its own nuclear reactor inside there, which just blew me away. So, I mean, nobody- It was Danish island monkey. So we are talking like Americans were like actually yeah. doing this. This is like before Reagan, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, this would be before Reagan. And so the technology is incredible as to what they can do in terms of boring down and cutting into tunnels. And so there's pictures, if you go out to Wikipedia, you can actually look it up. And there are, there's actually really good pictures of that underground base with the nukes in place and all kinds of different stuff. So it's, it's kind of, you know, it's out there. It's just, nobody knows to look for it. So. So can I ask you, when you look at those planes also, um, you described quite often, like there's, there are different kinds of planes. So there are planes that they have like this torture planes, right? How you can tell when you observe this, um, like what is the, the factor that determines which plane is which? Okay. So, um, how do I explain this to where it's, it makes sense? All right. So there, there are, let's say, for example, you're a, you're a, you're a great cook in the kitchen, right? And you have a certain set of, of pots and pans and spices that you like to use when you cook, right? Our agencies are the same way. They have a, a type of aircraft that they like to use. So, so if you have a, a one person on a, on an aircraft, it doesn't make sense to, ha to have a big aircraft, right? It makes sense to have a smaller aircraft, right? right? Yeah. So what they do is they basically have this certain style and size aircraft that they use. Usually it's either going to be a 737 or it's going to be one of the little small, you know, Gulf streams or something of that nature. Okay. And so the reason I can determine those is because they're going to the black site locations and they kind of fit the mold of what, operators like to use, right? So when I say operators, I'm talking about uh, special force types, uh, military kind, right? Or former, because there's a lot of people that work for the agencies that are, they were uh, special forces, spe special operations in the military and did very similar stuff. Uh, but now they are working for civilian side or government, you know, federal contractors, yeah. right? Yeah. They just bring that skill set right over and it yes. fits to. And so these aircraft are, one, they're the same companies, right? Same, they're, they're one of those 15, 20 companies that we've been, we've been watching. They are going to the black sites. And so that's how I can identify them right out of the gate is that, hey, these are, they kind of fall within that criteria, right? 
Now the difference on a rendition flight, it doesn't have some, you know, crazy jungle gym in it. And, you know, it's not like it's a, a, a perfectly set up aircraft. They could do stuff in those. Now the 737s have the ability that that aircraft, uh, say for, for an example, Kalita Airlines, mm -hmm. the inside of that 737 can be gutted. They basically, it's just an uh, open tube. And so that side door, the big cargo door on the side can open up and they'll push in, uh, I, would, I guess you could call them skids or pallets or whatever, right? But these skids will go in and they can be configured. Those skids can configure to whatever you want and they can put cargo in it. They can put passenger seats in it. They can do anything they want. They can put medical stuff in there. So you have uh, stretchers and whatever. I mean, they can do anything. So, um, and so when they do these rendition flights, what they do is they have to, they, they're one, they're going to be chartered. They're not going to be military. Okay. They, they take off out of a, usually a location like Fort Lauderdale or Miami over international airspace, because out of Miami, you can be over international airspace on a 737 or a, or a Gulf stream, uh, probably in about 15, 20 minutes. Right. So they get out over international water and then the, the rules of engagement change. And so they will then take those people on that, like while they're flying and they may have them hooded, they may have them put on a stretcher, they may have them sitting in a seat. They'll just intimidate them, uh, waterboard them, whatever it may be to get them talking because there's a, you know, most people have a fear of flying. That's just the common, it's like. Right, I didn't even think about it. It's so crazy, you know, I, because I love to fly. I didn't even think about it, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. I, I've got a lot of flight hours, right? And I've, I've been all over the world. And uh, I can tell you that I love to fly until I hit a thunderstorm or something makes me feel like I'm out of control. And then at that point, I, I'm ready to, I'm like, I'm done with flying. I won't Touch get off. the ground. <laughs> exactly. Kiss the ground when I get off. Yes. Yeah. So, so it's the same kind of environment. Most people have a fear of flying. And so you, when you get them in that environment, they don't have any control because the pilots are flying they are at the mercy of pilots yeah. people around them. Yeah. And so people tend to talk. It puts a fear factor into them. And so they tend to talk. And then when they're, they'll, they'll take that same flight, they'll land in uh, one of those island spots and they'll take them to uh, like one of the little, uh, like a safe house type of environment, right? Which I call, it's a black site. It's something that's off the grid where nobody knows it's there. It looks like a normal house or it's somewhere back tucked away somewhere. And they'll take them in there and they basically, you know, will, I, I don't want to use the word torture. I just want to, I'd say intimidate them to the point where they're going to tell you what they're up to. Right. And it's all a matter of national security. They don't do it just for, you know, you know, just, just to, to rough somebody up. They're basically, they're trying to get information out of them because our country's security yes. is at stake. So, yes. So it's so, um, thank you. I want to ask you because you look at those coasts, both both sides of the United mm -hmm. States, all the time, frequently. Yeah. Um, you know, interesting thing because I just want to sidetrack for a moment. It's funny when when I heard Nellis, Nellis, I'm like, what about Nellis? I actually used to live in Las Vegas in Nevada, so I know very well this part of North Vegas where the Nellis base is bases. Yeah. I'm like, what, what, what are you talking about? So apparently people were like freaking out about this, but it was like exercise or something. What was happening there? Yeah, so it's, it's basically, a, it was a, uh, I think it's a force, force entry exercise, I think is what it's called. Or it's basically, uh, this happened on December 5th and it was late at night, probably 9.30 central time. And we basically had an influx of large aircraft. So those are the C-17s or cargo aircraft or C-130s. And we had probably, I, if I had to count them, probably close to 50. Wow. Oh yeah. All descended in Ellis within about, a, within about 45 minutes time. I mean, it was crazy. That's I, crazy. I remember when actually I used to work in this area, I remember the constant noise, but to, to such an extent, it's like unbelievable. So now what happened to those planes? Where did they go? Well, so they landed in Nellis and some of them went down to Los Angeles and then most of them went back to their other bases. Now, here's what was crazy to me is because they said it was an exercise and that uh, it was a common exercise. I haven't, I've never seen an exercise like that. I was pretty impressed by it actually. But my understanding from talking with my friends that are former uh, Navy SEALs and they still have buddies that are in there, 
they said that they were actually prepositioning um, operators, you know, like, like basically prepositioning assets for, for an event or something. So now I think, you know, this what is the blackout I, event we're talking? Maybe, maybe. I, so those aircraft, so I watched that area for a while expecting if this is an exercise, just like you lived there before, right? And so you, you, um, you remember they have red flags all the time. So there's like all kinds of fighters and all kinds of bombers and you see them all the time because there's exercises and events going on. And those usually are three or four day events. And then different countries come in and they do this exercise and then they all leave, right? Well, I expected it because it came in on a Saturday night. I figured Monday morning would be hot, maybe Sunday. And there was really not a lot. I saw a handful of aircraft depart. And then, uh, so I, I don't know. They went back to their bases or they did, went and got more people. I don't know. That was just it. It just kind of fizzled out. You expect to see a large wave come in that you'd see a large wave go out or you'd see them continue on with that. And, and we saw a handful of things. I saw maybe five or six C-130s come out and they go across the mountain range. Maybe they were doing some, some uh, jump exercises or something, but I don't know. It was crazy. It was crazy. I've like, like I said, it's, it, you don't get to see things like that very often. It was kind of fascinating. So unusual, huh? Very, very. Yes. So yeah. now when you look at the coast monkey, can you tell us um, from your experience and from your knowledge and your research, is there a certain um, danger gatherings? How, how you see this? Like, for example, let's talk about California first. Mm -hmm. How you see California at this point? Is it, is it safe or it's in, in kind of like a dangerous situation or what, what you see? Because you also see, and I want to say this, this is so amazing. I want to actually talk about William Barr for a moment later. But you also see like the other planes that, is, that are connected to certain people. And I think when you do your work and you put all of this together, it really starts to make sense. Yeah. Because then you see the true colors of the people, right? You see the, the directions they are going. I mean, right. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, do I think California's in danger? I don't. I think it's in danger from its own government. I think, you know, Newsom and Pelosi and uh, uh, Adam Schiff, right? I think those, those people are definitely a risk. I think that that's, um, you know, that's something that the people of California are going to have to deal with, you know, that's, but uh, do I think there's some type of an invasion risk or anything like that? I don't, not at all. I just, and that's the other thing too. I've been watching all of this activity go on and these people talking about, you know, 50,000 Chinese and bunkers being taken out and uh, this threat, you know, in California. And now we've got, you know, naval ships on both coasts, you know, on high alert. And I talked to my Navy guys that are active in and they're like, no, we're, we got an exercise in San Diego, but there's no, you know, matter of fact, there was boats that I was tracking that left San Diego and went to Guam. And I'm like, if you're under attack, one, the president isn't going to be out giving speeches. Uh, our Navy military isn't going to be doing exercises off the coast. We're going to be on high alert. Yep. Uh, you know, it's just even even I can understand this. <laughs> It makes sense. And that's the thing. It's a matter of discernment. And a lot of people just, they get caught up in the moment. They hear. Yeah. They, and, and I think it's almost like they actually throw some informations for people to freak out. Yeah. Well, and that's the other thing too. It, it, it was almost, and what I've been seeing is almost like a disinfo campaign going on, right? Where somebody is trying to just throw things out to get... Yeah everybody's eyes off of what's really going on and to make this, this big conspiracy theory thing, just, you know, it just gets everybody, you know, fighting. Yeah, and like weaken your, weaken your, your personal power because you get, you give so much energy to the fear again, and they control you with this again. Yeah. But that's why people like yourself are so, so wonderful and incredible because you really literally have the knowledge and I want to thank you again for sharing this with people, you know, like, I don't know how you came across this decision, you decided to do it, but I'm so glad you do. And you really speak about it in such a way that people can understand what, what's happening. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that because sometimes I'll, I'll say things and, and uh, I'm kind of thinking, I don't know, I probably could have said that better, you know, 
So, uh, you know. No, you do. great job. Like literally, you know, I want to ask you now, um, let's talk about Greenland for us, not Greenland, um, Antarctica. Did you ever look at the traffic going there? South? No, I have it, but you know, what's funny you say that because when I talk to my Navy buddies, they are telling me that is basically the area we need to be watching, which I don't know why. And I haven't, and when I look on my maps, there's really not a lot that's down south. It's all, you know, it doesn't really go beyond central uh, or south, south central America, right? So you get, you know, Argentina and that, that kind of stuff. And, but when you get down to the, the, the lower part of South America, I don't really see any air traffic. Hmm. And so I don't see any boat traffic. I don't see anything. So Could it be like completely hidden from people? Yeah, very likely. Very likely. So a lot of, so that's the thing when, if there's a true military operation going on, those guys aren't going to broadcast for right. the most, you know, there may be some that broadcast, but most of them are not going to broadcast the, um, for example, the boats. So when a Navy boat or a carrier, when they're up against the shore and the coastline, they'll be, they'll transmit. So people see them, they don't want other boats running into them, you know, at night or, you know, things of that nature. But the reason they go into San Diego is one, it gives everybody a little shore leave, but the boats have to have maintenance just like aircraft do, right? And so they'll go in and they'll dry dock them or they'll work them um, right there in the Bay Area. And then they'll pull them out, just set them right off the coast. And that, that whole, all the sailors will be working, you know, long, long days in a just a fury of a frenzy to get that, that boat back into serviceable condition so it can get back out and protect our country. Right. And yes. so they work all these long hours and long days and then they get it done and then it'll, it'll cast off and it'll be heading to say Guam, for example, yep. as it gets away from the coastline and it's probably 15, 20 miles out, that thing goes dark and you don't know where it's going. They position themselves. Exactly. So, so, Tell me this, like when you look at the global scale of this um, traffic now, Monkey, how is, what has changed as far as there are certain places that have more activity, but not just once, like let's say over and over and over again, like traffic, traffic always there, that it, yeah. using, used, you, that it hasn't been there prior. The right. <laughs> Yeah. So, so now, can you say, is this like in Europe, like in England, it's more like, can you, can you tell us what you see, Europe and US, all of this together, or maybe even other parts of the world, if it's connected? Yeah, so what I see, and this is what's crazy, I wasn't, before I was just looking at, at the spa, right? That right. Was, was really yeah. just focused on that. And because I started noticing that those aircraft were, when I started tracking them, all of a sudden, I'd see them go into Europe, I'd see him go, you know, across the drink. And I'm thinking, man, from the spa, Oh, from the spa. Yeah, they would head out like today, for example, I was watching, I was looking at the spa just at air traffic when, when I was broadcasting. And, uh, and I saw two aircraft coming in from Spain, going into, into Dominican Republic, which is one of the black sites. And so I'm thinking, huh, that's kind of strange. Where did it come from in Spain? I look, came straight out of that, that, uh, the Terra Sierra Trans island. island, Spanish yeah. island. Yes, the one that has the prison on it, right? So I'm thinking, what are the odds that it's going from that island that I've been watching down to Dominican Republic, which is another spot that that are also, you know, bringing people in to do interrogations, probably, right? So, oh. just so I see a lot of stuff going on off the coast of Portugal and Spain. I see a lot of things happening in Greece. Greece is another area that I've been seeing. And then I'm also starting to see things pop in and out of Africa, which is very- which part, Monkey? South? South Africa, yes. South Africa. Yeah, South Africa, right. Okay. And how about United Kingdom? Do you see something there? No, the, the UK stuff is kind of blends with us. I don't, because I see, you know, I see so much stuff going, going straight into Gatwick or Heathrow from the US, from DC into like Israel, right? There's a lot of flights that'll, that'll pop in, they'll gas up in London and then they'll go over to Israel or they'll just fly direct. So it's um, not, not a lot of stuff going in, into there, no. And how is the East Coast as far as New York and this, this part? 
uh, in terms of what traffic traffic and then like where they go well most of them are either headed down to XPL Honduras or Miami mm. or they're heading up to Greenland Iceland and over to Israel that's kind of the the main things that I'm seeing and then over to the that uh, Terra Sierra uh, Terra it's interesting, like even the directions, like when you're saying this, I'm like, this is so shady. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is that, um, so I, I, you know, and I don't know if you heard my, me talk about this, uh, this lockdown that's coming, right? Yes, I actually, I, I would appreciate if you say this to those who are watching because, yeah, it's important. So I've got friends that are still very connected with their active counterparts, right? These are guys that retired from the military that were were special operations, special forces guys. Okay. And so that, that's a tight circle of, of guys and they, they still have buddies that are in that are career guys. And so they talk, right? Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're all watching because of this, how things are going down. Right. We, we all are talking that are out that we we've been out. We have comms going that, Hey, when do we need to step up? When are we going to need to start kind of thinking about, you know, if, if, if Biden gets in, um, which won't be the case. I, I hope not. I hope, <laughs> but, uh, you know, then all of a sudden Patriots, people that swore an oath to uphold the constitution of this country are going to have to step it up. Right. And so we talk, but then there's that out, that's, that's our inner circle, but then that outer circle of chatter are guys that are still in. Right. And so my contacts, it was crazy because I, I had three people contact me the same night talking very similar things in nature about lockdown, about get, you know, get ready, make sure you tell people to get prepped and things of that nature. Now this one contact was telling me that, Hey, his buddy that is still active duty special forces uh, told, uh, told him that, Hey, listen, get ready for a lockdown. That's going to last one to two weeks is what he said. And he said, if it's one week, then, you know, it'll, it'll be fast and furious, but if we can't get it all done in a week, it's going to stretch to two weeks. So, you know, depending on the level of resistance, but the lockdown is going to be, a, it's a military operation. And I was told it's going to be global. And so with that said, you know, that's why I put out there, Hey, listen, you know, now start- can, can we talk about this? Because it happened to be, I was eight years old when it was a martial law war in Poland. Okay. I actually witnessed this, like when the Russian army came in and there were like soldiers on the street. I mean, literally you could see like Russian took over Poland, 1981. Okay. okay. So I remember very well, even though I was a child. Um, but I want to ask you, when you say this lockdown, is it something like that, that you have soldiers on the streets, like I experienced, they actually control, there's like a curfew. So there's a certain time you cannot leave the house, etc. Now, certain stores like food stores are open. Now, as far as internet connection, can you tell me more, Mikey, how, how this is going to, if, if you know, or what do you think it will unfold? Well, that's just it. There's not a lot of details around it. So I'm, I would be going off script if I tried to, to tell you what I think. Now, you know, based on what I'm hearing, it sounds like there'll be some type of a a maybe a presidential broadcast that'll tell everybody, hey, we're going to go into, you know, martial law will be declared and people that'll establish curfews. That'll tell governors they have to go enact this and down to the city level where people, most citizens are going to just abide. I mean, we, you saw what happened with the COVID when, when the governors of each state started telling everybody what to do, right? We're, most people are sheep. They're, they, everybody just put their head down. They put on a mask. They social distance. Yeah. We just did what we were told, right? Yeah. Even, it logically made no sense. Yes. Okay. And still it doesn't, and California continues the same. I know, it makes no sense. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I think what's going to happen is people are going to kind of associate it with the COVID, that we've got this increase and that, okay, we, we've got uh, we to flatten the curve again. Even though logically people should realize that we've been, we haven't done anything different than we were doing before COVID started in terms of we're all wearing masks, we're all social distancing. So if we did that, then there shouldn't be a spike or an increase because we're doing everything they told us to do. What that tells you is the mask and the distancing doesn't work. It's, it's a joke. And so now- I think it's helping people, more, more and more people actually are seeing the, how absurd it is, how ridiculous it is. 
Yeah. Okay. The, the, the more they prolong it, yeah. the more people are like trying at least to question it. Yes. Yeah, for sure. And people are starting to get a little bit angry about it. You know, they're, they're like, I'm not wearing a mask. I'm done wearing it. Right. Um, what people don't realize is that even though you may have your mouth covered, if you're not wearing a, an N95 um, type mask or some type of other PPE that is uh, made for those type of conditions, one, that's not going to block anything. I, I wear gaiters just because I'm defiant. They mess my beard up. So I'll put on with a gaiters where it's just a, it's almost a thing around your neck and just pull it up over here. Right. I'll do that just to keep my beard from getting that crease in there because it wears me out. Right. So, um, but if your eyes aren't protected, then you just like a cold, if somebody sneezes in a room or anything like that, if stuff's airborne, it's going to go right into the mucous membranes of your eyes and you're going to get sick regardless. So, um, but it's unnecessary and it's psychological. That's what it is. It's really psychological. It's, it's, it's threatening people mentally, psychologically, and now also with those businesses, I really feel for those people who are yep. losing everything. They sacrifice their life for years and years and years. And they were working so hard to have their own business in this country and to create something and to whatever kind of service it was. And now they are losing all of it because of the cruelty of government. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. It's all about control. So now, um, what we were saying, we were saying about the, how this lockdown might, so this is really literally Trump's, um, administration. This is like his plan to, to take control of this madness right now. Right. Right. So we see, I mean, we've caught him red handed. We know that, that there was shenanigans in play, major, major shenanigans. Right. And so what's happened is. Here's how I think it's going to unfold. He just won in Nevada, by the way. Oh, oh, he did. They just announced. Oh, wow. That's, that's promising. Yeah, so that's like, and then, you know, there are a few more states. But, I mean, hmm. I know that this is going to be great. I just, I'm just like, literally, I'm praying and I'm trusting God because I am not a soldier. I am like the digital. <laughs> but I'm not going on the street and like fighting. So my point is like how to give people strength mentally. Yeah. Go through those times and to sustain this energy within themselves. Yes. The faith in God, the faith in, in goodness and light that they can actually persevere. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, let me tell you, as a person of God and of faith, never underestimate the power of prayer because uh, those that what you call a digital soldier or whatever, it's, it's, there is spiritual warfare going on right now that is on unprecedented levels. And so uh, I don't discount that at all. Matter of fact, I would, I would almost say you can get more accomplished through prayer yes. if anything's done than you can going out and swinging a sword. And Thank so- Thank you for saying this. It's, it's supernatural power. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so with that, I, I think what's going to happen is I think Trump is probably going to uh, dig his heels in. Everybody's going to realize that uh, he's not going to concede and he's going to start going after prosecuting people. And as soon as they realize he's not stepping down, he's not conceding and he's starting to prosecute people. The left is probably going to lose their minds. They're going to take to the streets. They're going to try and start doing stupid stuff you know, uh, trying to overthrow the White House or whatever it may be. And that's going to cause him to say, you know, it's going to happen on so many different levels, just like we saw before. Yep. All the big major cities, Los Angeles, Portland, Seattle, Miami, Atlanta, uh, DC, all of these big major cities are going to going to basically go into lockdown. And Trump's probably going to say, hey, just for the safety of everybody, right. we're putting everybody on lockdown. Okay. And so that lockdown is going to go into play and we're all going to be sitting waiting and not knowing, in my opinion. So here's the key to this. In order for our military to be successful and in order for them to uh, operate in an environment that is, is not rapidly changing, they have to shut down comms, our communication, right? If you and I can talk on a regular basis and all of a sudden I tell you, I call you and say, hey, I've got tanks and military coming down my street, right? Now you're going to call somebody and tell them, well, somebody, you know, in another neighborhood adjacent to mine is going to start preparing, right? And so now they've got their guns ready. They're not sitting in the backyard having barbecue. They're going to be ready for this to happen, okay? So you have to shut that off. And that's just, um, 
battle, you know, let's, that's just 101, battle 101, right? I mean, if you can eliminate the enemy's communication, then you have the element of surprise, right? And so what they're going to do is they're going to shut down probably the internet. They're going to shut down the news stations, all the social media. It's all going to go bloop, black. And we're going to be sitting while all that stuff goes on. And praying, monkey. Finally, people will be praying. Yes, that's key. That's what they need to go do, right? Right. So, and then just people need to be taking care of their own areas, right? Make sure, hey, my house is secure. My neighbor's house. Is, take care of your neighbor. That's what's key to this is, you know, what, what is, I mean, Jesus tells us, love our neighbor, right? Yep. And so it's very important and we have to take care of one another. And so just your immediate circle around you, you know, your next door neighbor, you guys make sure, hey, you know, if you need something, I'm here. If you can trust them. If you can't, don't tell them, you know, don't, don't do that. But I agree with you. Yes, 100%. Thank you for explaining this because it's better to, I always think like if you think about the worst case scenario, then you kind of um, find more peace within yourself. Yeah, no, without a doubt, right? And what's one of the things is that, uh, you know, the, the old saying, what is it? Fail to plan, plan to fail, right? And so, you know, part of that, that people can do if you're not, you know, I, to me, so from a Bible perspective, I look at myself like a Psalm 144 kind of guy, right? I'm, I'm going to go out and defend my family, my country. I'm going to do whatever I can, right? I'm not, I'm, that's, I swore an oath to protect, you know, I'm, I'm an Air Force veteran. And so that, that's an oath. I, I think, I mean, that's so beautiful because I think there is thousands and thousands of people like yourself who actually, you know, um, are veterans and they are no longer in the service, but they, they could just show up anytime because it's in their blood, it's in their soul and That's they just have it. And they are, it doesn't matter if it's 60 year old, 70 year old, there are people who don't think age, they just feel this is necessary in certain yeah. situations. I hope it won't be necessary and drastic like this, but it's at the same time, I also know from the spiritual standpoint, and there are many aspects, like there's astrology, there is, all of this is connected really, mm -hmm. that you cannot um, stop what is going to happen. And actually it's necessary for this to happen. Yeah. Because that is the very important step in order for the change to, to be grounded and yeah. for, for the evil to be removed. Yeah. Because the exposure is already happening for a long time. But let's, let me ask you one more thing. And I really appreciate your time. I don't want to take more of your time because I know you're busy with so many things now. Oh, it's okay. You were talking about William Barr. And I happened to, a while ago, I came across those, again, certain people who have quite intel. And th that person presented that he is actually not the one to trust because he used to work for Papa B. Mm -hmm. And he used to be part of the three-letter organization that starts with C, like Cuba. Yeah. So when you put all those dots together, it really make, makes sense that there is not much action happening from this individual right now. So yeah. I want to ask you, when you look at his, um, like today you mentioned, I was like, oh, wow, Monkey is talking about it. So... What, what, what you were watching, what was the plane action going on with this, with him? Oh, that's, so that's his aircraft. That's the one he flies around. And mm -hmm. so uh, it flies by the call sign Jenna 622. And so uh, I, I watch it just because I can tell what's going on relative to where he's going, you know? And so... Where he was going exactly? Well, today he went to Macon, Georgia. So I don't know what he's doing down there, but he hasn't traveled in almost 14 days. And so you got to ask yourself, what's in Macon, Georgia, that, you know, with the, in terms of the DOJ and, uh, you know, we know, we do know that Georgia is in play. It's a swing state. It's yeah, that, exactly. That's what's happening. Yep. Yeah. And so that could be that, uh, you know, my thing is he was, he was buddy, buddy with Robert Mueller. Right. There we and, go. Right. And so, uh, to me, a leopard never changed his spots. And I think, the fact that he is not doing anything, what appears to be doing nothing, is uh, it's I can't... showing enough, right? What's that? That's showing enough. This is enough of evidence that there is no evidence that is that's what he's doing. He's doing nothing. Yeah, because let's be honest, there there are a lot of low hanging fruit out there, right? I mean, you look at Clinton and all of her classified data leaks. You look at 
uh, all the uranium one stuff that was going on. There were so many things where people uh, have been caught with their, their hand in the cookie jar, so to speak, where if it was you and me, we would have been in jail. We wouldn't have seen the light of day. They would have prosecuted us in probably, you know, three weeks time for doing that same stuff. And we would be in jail for the rest of our lives. And it's a double standard of justice, right? And so these people, nothing's, nothing's taking place. And I think it's because you got the fox guarding the hen house. He's slow rolling everything. He's going to go do other things that, that are busy work, like human trafficking and things like that. But he's not doing anything to take down the actual swamp. And so- uh, You know, I think, Monkey, actually, I tell you, I think many of the names, known names, has already been captured, OK? That's how I feel. And what I think is very important at this moment, what's happening right now, and I think it's brilliant, it's just so brilliant that this is pushing this whole situation from, from president to the last hour, literally, for people to choose the side. Because yeah. when you come to the point, like you either hear, you decide, like they have to decide. And then once they decide, this is it. Yeah. So a lot of people are choosing now on which side they are on and it will go to the point, I think it will go all the way to the election day. And then it will be like literally maybe two days before the 20th of January, it will be like, now we know this is it. Yeah, I think actually 113 is my date. That's the date. Okay, to okay. <laughs> that's better. <laughs> well, here's why I say that, okay? Because uh, I don't know if you follow Q at all. If, if, if you I don't follow lately much, but I used to earlier, but now I just watch it without following. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a PSYOP without a doubt, but there's pertinent information in there and you have to understand, you have to, to be able to understand what to follow, what not to follow, right? But there's, there's a key phrase in there. And if you remember, there was an early, early Q drop that went out that talks about how the president will be on Air Force One, he'll be safe, right, and secure, right? And at the very end of that, it quotes John 316, right? It says, uh, it, it talks about, so it talks about him being safe on Air Force One, and then it goes into the spillover and talks about how there'll be uh, civil unrest, a very light yes. amount of yeah. unrest contained quickly the storm is upon us right right and then it goes into john three sixteen, and then at the very end it says um uh first corinthians 13 it says love is patient love is kind but it doesn't right. now i remember i yes yes right it says john three sixteen, and then all of a sudden at the very end of john three sixteen, it says love is patient love is kind that is first corinthians 13 so I think 113. Okay. You can do out. Right. Well, at the very end, then you've got uh, 4, 10, 20, which is Donald J. Trump, right? Oh, my gosh. I'm going to mark it on my calendar now. So that's why I think that's going to be an important date. So I thought it didn't make sense to me because I'm, I don't know if, I, if, if you have been following me. That's, uh, I'm in seminary school, right? And so when I, I'm, I'm always looking at Bible verses and I'm always looking at, at, you know, different contexts. And when I see things that are posted and I look at them from a biblical standpoint, they start to come together. Yeah. So here's one thing. I don't know if you knew this or not, um, but, you know, Q was always talking about um, this. Uh, it's going to be biblical. Mm -hmm. Well, if you go back and this is where I tied this together. If you go back to the day of the, the E day, right? November 3rd. Yes. That date on the Hebrew calendar was the exact same date in history of Noah's flood. And really? so, yes. And remember, he kept saying, watch the water, watch the water. No, that's right. But then it was the watermarks. Well, that's what we thought. But he said, watch the water. And he keeps talking about it's going to be biblical. Well, if I take that information, I look at that. I think, what day, what are the odds that our, our, our November 3rd happened to be? the exact same day that Noah's great flood took place on the Hebrew calendar, right? And so I think what he was tipping us off to was a date without saying the date. And I also think that what he was telling us when he said it's going to be biblical, A, it ties that together, but it also ties it together with John 3.16. And there's only one post out there that, that is John 3.16 related, and that's the one that says Trump will be on Air Force One 
right? And so now I'm starting to look at that. And I'm thinking, okay, well, this starts to make sense. That was the big event that triggered everything that you can't stop. I mean, once the flood started, there was no stopping it, right? It's amazing. I mean, thank you for this. This is like so clear now when you said it. I yeah. love it. So almost, monkey, we are almost there. This is like the final countdown. It has to be, 100%. It's not going to go beyond, it can't go beyond January. It'll be just mass chaos. So and the global, when you said global, oh my God, I could talk to you forever. So the global situation, when you said that global, what do you mean by this? Because he can, he can say this for US, but what do you mean the world? Well, so here's the deal. You have to remember, um, this is all about, uh, the whole world is watching. And the reason the world is watching is because if you look at the elections, what we've just unveiled is the fact that that entire system- Shenanigans all around the world. It's been corrupted all around the world. We've yeah. been leaders in a place that did, didn't get the electoral vote. Yes. The Horrible. Pe Imagine people are putting their trust and energy and they go and they vote and it doesn't matter what they say. It's predetermined. And so now, you know, and, and, you know, if you've ever been around somewhere where you've been like, hey, you know what? I, I can't find a soul that voted for this person. Exactly. But he voted for this person. How the heck did this guy win? How did I this happen? Right. It's like, what, what was it? How did it happen? Exactly. And so what's happened is the rest of the world is going to see they're going to everybody right now is looking at their system thinking, hey, do we use that same system? We do. People are starting to ask questions, and it's why you're going to see it go into Canada, France, yes, Germany, Argentina. UK. Oh, Brexit, Brexit, the whole thing. Yeah. Yes, it is all going to come together, and so that's why it's going to be on a global scale. So what's happened is all of these countries, uh, the Five Eyes, which is uh, Canada, Australia, yeah. England, mm -hmm. right, right. So all of these countries that were involved in trying to overturn this election and, and basically do the coup attempt against, against Trump, that's why it's going to be global because there's going to be a takedown of every one of those government leaders. I can guarantee it. That's why you're not, you're not just going to go in and go, oh, I'm, I'm coming in to get the servers off of computers. No, this is going for the head of the snake. And so this is biblical for real. It is 100%. Yeah. But I can tell you this, uh, just from a biblical standpoint, we know, that it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. There's, there's no, and I've been saying this, there's no MAGA in the Bible, right? I think, in my opinion, uh, Trump is key for Israel. He's key for the peace agreement. He's key for all yes. of that stuff that's going together. Yes. But I also think that something's going to happen to America that takes us out of the picture. And whether it's a, um, uh, an internal thing, whether it's a bioweapon, whether it's, it's uh, you know, China attacking us, something takes us out of play because that's, we are the secondary. I mean, God protects Israel, but at the end of the day, right now with America in play and a strong president Trump, who's very pro Israel, nobody's going to go after Israel. Nobody's going to touch them. And so in order for Bible prophecy to be fulfilled, we have to be out of the way because there's, then there's nobody to protect Israel at all other than God himself. Right? So, so I'm just saying it's, it's, this goes, it goes way beyond what, you know, we see it and, and everybody tries to think that, oh, America is going to be, oh, we're going to be great again. But it's not, if you read your Bible, you know, you know, there's, there's an economic reset, you know, there's a mark of a beast, there's, you know, there's a whole bunch of things that take place that gets really, really, really bad in the tribulation uh, before it ever gets good, right? So. You know, actually, I see this will be, it will be good. I feel like we will be the example yeah of, of the truth and liberation and goodness and light world for the rest yeah, of the world. i feel like this light is really spreading from us i see this like the light is spreading and it goes across the world and people actually like they break down into tears and they finally like feel they can love one another that's yeah. how i feel this but yeah. monkey, thank you so much i don't want to take more of your time i want to ask you this because you have incredible shop and you have those amazing products that you are selling. A lot of them are sold out now. I think you don't have time to really do them. But can you tell me a little bit more? Is this your craft? Like you are actually making those beautiful things? Yeah, yeah. So what I do is I basically, I have my own beard bombs, my own soaps. I make all those myself. I destroy my kitchen um, and I, I, I make them. 
everything from the labels to wrapping each soap individually. So yeah, I make it all myself, but uh, yeah, everything's sold out right now. It's, it's insane. But those pants like made from wood, they are so gorgeous. You also make this from the wood? Yeah, now I don't do the turning of the pins. What I do is I basically buy the wood from, from my source in Israel because okay. I make a bunch of other stuff from Israel as well with the wood. Um, but my, uh, my wife's cousin is a pin maker and he lives in Oklahoma and I basically have him make pins for me and we sell them. So beautiful stuff you have on your website. So there are still a few products left so people can get it before Christmas if they want. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been crazy. I actually, so my, right now my studio is sitting inside my shop. And so after the new year, I'm going to actually relocate my studio piece away from my shop so that I can actually do recordings and not have to shut off my machine, my machinery. So uh, yeah, I've got a lot of stuff in here, the engravers and all kinds of stuff. You know, I've, I have an embroidery machine that does my hats and you have and, your own universe around you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it gets pretty crazy, but yeah, it's, I've been blessed. I'm telling you, people have just been buying stuff like crazy and I'm trying to get the orders filled and, and uh, just trying to keep up with it all. And so I I'm have not to tell you, you have such an amazing energy about you. I have well, to tell you this, like it's such like there is this goodness really coming out from the screen. Such I, good energy you have. It's incredible. You know, it's very easy now. Like now you, you cannot fool people. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Yeah. I don't have that. I don't have that meanness in me. Um, that's just not what I'm about. I, I, I love other people and, and uh, I, try to, I try to trust as much as I can, you know, and, and uh, treat people how I think, you know, they should be treated and like I'd like to be treated. So thank you so much. God bless you. God bless your family, your wife. And thank you for all your work that you do. I really appreciate this. And I really appreciate your time today. Yeah. So, yeah. And somehow I was able to understand <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, listen, you can reach out to me anytime. And if you want me to come back on and, and uh... yes, thank you so much. You know, I think this is like really important now to follow certain people who know what they are talking about. And I'm just so glad that you exist. Like I came across you. I'm like, Oh my God, who no one else does this. Like you do no one else. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks. Uh, thank we'll you. See. Hopefully I can continue on. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited about it. I just, uh, I, you know, I, I want the best for our country. And, and most of all, I want people yeah, you to can see it really comes out from the screen. Do they give you hard time YouTube or no? Yeah, I get it. I get hard times. Yeah. And I get threats and I get, uh, you know, that's why I don't put my real name out there. And I try to just keep kind of personal stuff because, uh, yeah, I do get threats and attacks, you know, all the time. So, uh, but it's, you know, I understand it. That's, uh, uh, it's the nature of this business. So <laughs> That's when you know you're doing the right thing and you're over the target. So, but you know, God is watching over you. Absolutely. Yeah. God is watching over you. Thank you so much, monkey. I really appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless. God bless.